Welcome back to my channel. My name is Kelsey and I'm here today to do my mid-March wrap-up. Oh hi, thanks for checking in. I'm still a piece of garbage. So as you've seen before in the previous months, I want to do a mid-month wrap-up just because I tend to read a lot of books, lowest being 10 books a month, and that can be quite a difficult feat at the end of the month, especially because I go into statistics as well. So we'll get right into it with my first read of the month, and that was The Final Revival of Opal and Nev by Donnie Walton. So before we begin, I do want to say that I posted a video, it's the last video I uploaded, and it goes over why I think you should read Opal and Nev, especially if you enjoy the oral history format of rock and roll non-fiction that was very prevalent within the early 2000s that spoke about the rock movements in the 1970s, 80s, and 90s. This book is a fictional account on that matter that follows two characters, one named Opal, who is this fierce independent young black woman who moves to New York City in order to kind of like pursue her singing career, and her partner Nev, who is this young British man who becomes interested in Opal when he sees her singing at a bar's like independent amateur night. And in addition to that, the story also follows a character named Sunny, who is working as a head editor at this rock magazine and kind of pursues the idea to write a novel on Opal and Nev. So like I said, I did post a video on this, so I won't go too much into detail. I'll just let you know that I rated this five stars. Absolutely adored it. If you love this oral history fiction kind of narrative, I think you'll really enjoy it. If you love rock and roll, I think you'll really enjoy it. It's very similar to Daisy Jones and the Six, which is one of my favorite books as well, and it goes along this same narrative, but I think Opal and Nev takes it one step further and really dives into the intersectionality between being a woman, being black, the rock scene, what happens. It was extremely well done, super fast paced and interesting, absolutely adored it, would highly recommend this one. The next book in the month of March I read was for the Late Night Book Club's March pick, and for that they chose The Power by Naomi Alderman. <sighs> So this book follows a time in a near distant future of our time where suddenly all the young women in the world develop electricity. And with this electricity, they can cause like agonizing death to anyone around them that they choose. Alderman is kind of tackling this idea that what if the power that the patriarchy has is now put into the hands of young girls. So I have extremely conflicting feelings about this novel, primarily because I was really looking forward to this. I really thought this was going to be a five-star read, and I ended up settling on a three stars for this book. Overall, I really enjoyed the plot. I think each character in the novel felt really real. I really enjoyed how they all came together in multiple ways and I really liked the arcs that their characters went on. I think it was really engaging and Alderman was able to create a vibrant plot using these characters. I really wanted to know what was happening with each POV so that's what really kept me turning the pages in the book. Along a similar vein, the way that this book is formatted was also extremely interesting. It's structured in like a novelization of nonfiction, and I think it works phenomenally for the book's like overarching background plot, which I won't get into just for like spoilery reasons, but I think it really did an excellent job at painting that picture. I would have loved for Alderman to really develop on that point. While the plot and the characters and this like background plot were interesting, I think that that's all the novel really offered. I don't think the novel did much to really combat this idea that it was trying to discuss. So in this world the younger women have this power and the roles and power structures that we know are kind of turned towards women's favor. And while I was really on board with that premise, I don't think Alderman really combated it. She, I don't think she really discussed it in any way. The novel's main premise was to really show that no matter which gender has the power, they will be like mean or take advantage of this power. But that's where the exploration ended. There was no real discussion on that. Like, yes, power corrupts people, but how do we combat that? How do we discuss that? How do we bring that up in a more philosophical way. Women who are given power in this book turn just as evil as the men in power now. And it's like, okay, but what can this world universe that she created do about that? It felt super anticlimactic because I just felt that Alderman really built up this idea and really demonstrated how women are treated in our current society. But as a woman, like, I already know that. This definitely felt like a book created for the masses. It was very non-controversial and very white feminist. I have nothing else to say. I gave this a three stars for the premise. 
and that's it. The next book I enjoyed a lot more, this is Reasons to Stay Alive by Matt Haig. This is Haig's non-fiction account on his struggles with depression primarily and how he was able to combat or really adjust and understand his feelings. So I read this in two sittings and I absolutely loved it. I am in somewhat of a good place with my mental health so nothing in this book really triggered me. However, I would tread lightly if you're not in a good mental health space with this book because Matt Haig really goes into the descriptions and describes the way he was feeling in these moments. So this book is both a mix of really positive messages but also really dark thoughts and he really goes into like in-depth and dark descriptions about the way he was feeling which for me was extremely validating. It was refreshing to read a book from someone who experiences depression because I really felt like I was being understood when I was reading this book. Parts of the book were so powerful that I had to like pause and annotate it. I would I would not say that this is a book that will really do anything to solve issues but it definitely makes someone feel not alone at least that's how I felt when I was reading it like with Haig's other books that I've read his writing is really beautiful and something I really enjoy and look for in his books some chapters in this book were so descriptive that I felt like I was writing the waves with him and that's where his prose and his writing style really shines my one like minor complaint about the book is that there are some chapters where there isn't prose it's more like lists of things and while they made me like smile and nod and be like okay yeah I get it they weren't really like the most profound things I ever read despite this reasons to stay alive was an excellent read and something that I'm really happy to have read in the pandemic I know it's like strange because this is probably like the worst year of my mental health but I think like I said this book was really validating and I think I needed it at this time and it was very comforting and I would definitely recommend it if you're looking for something along these lines and I ended up giving it four stars the next book I read was really tackling the Brandon Sanderson project I have going on this year and this is Warbreaker by him. At the beginning or like in my TBRs I didn't really know what Warbreaker is about so I can Warbreaker follows two sisters one named Siri and one named Vivenna. Siri and Vivenna are the daughters of a king who kind of controls this land outside of this bigger kingdom and they are kind of seen as the rebels of this kingdom. The kingdom in question is ruled over by this person called the God King. The God King are people who have passed and came back so they're kind of perceived as these high up figures in this society and the god king is the ultimate figure. Vivenna was tasked her entire life to prepare for a marriage alliance with the god king but instead of Vivenna going it turns out to be her younger sister Siri who has absolutely no preparation for this role. Another interesting element about this world just to tackle the magic system because Brandon Sanderson is very good at creating very interesting magic systems and in this world it is something called the breath. So essentially by using the breath you're kind of drawing upon the colors of an item of a person or of an animal and utilizing their like spirit through these colors to to engage with and use for your advantage. So much like with other Brandon Sanderson books, um, it does take me a while to get into them just because you're kind of thrust into this world and magic system that you've never seen before. But once I'm pulled in, I am pulled in. Sanderson across all his novels but especially in this one does a great job at developing his characters. I really cared about all the characters even the ones who turn out bad in the end just because I was so invested with their storylines and the way that they were growing throughout the entire novel. I do have to admit that I have a soft spot for sister stories so obviously I loved Siri and Vivenna especially because they were both vulnerable young women who were tasked with growing up and saving their country much earlier than they expected and I loved that. They are are definitely flawed but the different routes that these characters took couldn't have been more perfect for the roles that I think they needed to play. As mentioned, I obviously really enjoyed the magic system called the breath. It was a little confusing at first and you don't really completely understand what it is until much later in the novel, but even so, I did think it was really interesting. And speaking of which, I really adored the male characters in this novel because they really worked to expand the world building and the knowledge that came with understanding the world, but they were also charming and crucial to the system development. I was very happy when I got to the prologue of this novel because now in 2021 we know that there will be a sequel to this book so I'm just excited to dive into that and see the adventures that unfold from that and I ended up giving this four stars as well. The last book I read before jumping into this mid-month wrap-up was Breach of Peace by Daniel Green. So Daniel Green is a fantasy youtuber here on booktube and so I want to preface this review by saying I'm definitely going in with a bias. I love Daniel Green's channel and he did provide me with 
an advanced reader copy of his book. I ended up giving this a four stars because I could really tell the love and effort that Green put into his novella, even though I do see the faults that are there. Given that the book is 140 pages, I loved how fast paced and engaging it was. I think Green did a really excellent job at captivating his readers from the beginning and creating this really eerie atmosphere that I think really paid off. Our characters were really all interesting, but I think my favorite is Cleed. I think that's the way you pronounce it, or Clyde, simply because she is both our main character, but also very interesting and definitely a flawed character at that. She makes a multitude of mistakes within this novella, and I really appreciated that. As you know, if you've watched my channel for a while, I love flawed female characters. I did enjoy the other two side characters. They were both interesting and had their own personalities, and I thought they were both pretty developed. I also really enjoyed the world, but to a certain extent. I definitely agree with some of the criticisms that Green has received on this novel because he's basing it in the job of the main characters which is working in the police force and I do think it was glorifying their roles a bit in a way even though there were definitely some consequences to their actions and this also dives into my main criticism about the novella that I think the world building was a tad weak. I found myself really confused about the ending especially the religious components that were appearing towards the end but after watching some reviews and revisiting those scenes that confused me, I actually found the idea of it or the idea behind it to be really interesting and I wish that Green took some extra pages to explain that more in full. I think following authoritative figures who are essentially working in this Orwellian world that is kind of watched over by this figure called the God would have been an amazing element to integrate earlier on and just have more of an overall development of this world and I think that would have really benefited the message and point of view that Green was trying to partake, so I just wish that that was explained a bit more. The prose was very straightforward, which is not something I personally look for in novels, but I sort of expect from a debut author. All in all, I really did enjoy my time reading this. I loved the prologue or the last chapter at the end of this because I think it's really interesting and knowing that Green is going to create a trilogy of novellas. I'm very excited by the way this ended, seeing where it's going to go in the next novella. I will definitely be picking it up and I will definitely be pre-ordering this because obviously I want to support Daniel Green, but also because I really ended up enjoying this and I gave it a four stars. And finally, I just want to go into the books I am currently reading. So like I mentioned in my TBR, I am reading The Eye of the World with my friend Silvio. We're buddy reading this. So at this point, I am on page 300. I have a about another 300 or so pages to go so looking forward to continuing this. I am also currently listening to Leviathan Wakes by James S.A. Corey as an audiobook and I am about halfway through I would say at this point. I'm at page 350 out of like 500 something so more than halfway. I'm not too keen on this book. Um, I have a feeling it's going to come out to a three stars, but you're just going to have to turn into my final month wrap up to see. And then quickly, I'm about 50 pages into The Toll by Neil Shusterman. Obviously, I'm liking it. We don't need to talk about this. This is like going to become one of my favorite series. And that's it. These are all the books I read in the beginning of March. If you've read any of these books, please let me know down below. Let me know what you think about them. Don't forget to like, subscribe and ring the notification bell it makes me feel really good thank you i don't know how to end these things so i guess i will see you next time bye